All right guys, grab your coffee and settle down because today we're gonna to be talking about some of the most common RV problems and how to fix them. Hopefully. Hey guys, my name's James. And I'm Ashley. Last year we sold our house and we're traveling across the country with our kids. Hi, my name's Goose and this is Maverick. <laughs> Come join us. As you guys can tell, the truck is currently in the shop and so that is why we decided to uh, do this video about some of the problems that you will be facing when you are on the road. Whether you're a weekend warrior or whether you are full timing like us, problems are inevitable. But if you know how to tackle them, it can be a lot less stressful. We are now traveling all the way back pretty much across the entire country and before we did that we wanted to have our brand new uh, TPMS uh, tire pressure monitoring system installed and we decided this time to get some internal ones because we also wanted to replace our valve stems from the standard uh, plastic rubber ones to the metal ones which have a higher uh, PSI rating just to be safer uh, and so we were already planning on going into a tire shop but then we started noticing the tire or the truck pulling yeah. off to the side. And by we, he means he. Ashley was I was it. there for moral support. I am so thankful that we decided to uh, open up handy dandy Google and look up for a local tire shop uh, sooner rather than Which later. Which was like stressful because every single time I'm like, there's one. Oh, okay, never Too mind. Late. That was the exit. Okay, uh, oh, yeah. oh. Two years later, Ashley is still working on her navigation skills. She has gotten you know leaps what? and bounds I'm back. so awesome. So. Anyways, so I am so thankful we pulled off because, come to find out, one of our tires blew a belt again. I feel like we always say that. We blew a belt. Like now, now here's the thing. This brings us to topic number one. Truck tires and RV tires. First of all, if you want more detailed information, we have made an entire video talking about these, so you can check again, them out. And by we, he means he. <laughs> so you can check those out right there. But basically, <laughs> what it came down to is, these are the tires that I replaced uh, last year to match the tires that came on the truck. I was ignorant back then and I did not know about all of this information you need to know about the tires such as the tire ratings and the load ratings and all that kind of stuff. So these not tires... it needs to look pretty. Exactly. These tires were much more of an aesthetic thing and like mudding tires and so it was pretty inevitable that we were going to bust a belt on these. I am just so thankful that there was no catastrophic blowout on the truck tire because it was the front tires. So that could have been bad. Anyways, we have now- I always feel like when you say bust a belt that it's like, our tires ate too much at Thanksgiving and they <laughs> needed to wear their stretchy pants. <laughs> like... If only they made sweats for tires. <laughs> so we are all good to go now. I have upgraded uh, the front tires to match the rear. So we have the same four tires all around, which are, I believe, a load range G. Uh, here, let's check them out right here. These are the tires that we're using. We have them on all four, and we've had the front ones for uh, thousands of miles. I don't know exactly, but they have been great tires so far. They're a good mix between that aesthetic mud, you know, kind of off-road looking tire, but they're designed for street. They're like an all-terrain tire. So. so another thing we've had to deal with in the RV is propane leaks. Propane issues in general. Yeah, and not like, oh my gosh, it's leaking, get out, we're gonna blow, but like... <laughs> I, we have had the CO2 sensor go off before, oh which, my is, gosh. which is a bummer. Can I tell you, I love CO2 sensors, don't get me wrong, safety first. However, when they're so Sensitive. quick to go off, you're just like... So <laughs> the, uh, the reason our CO2 sensor has gone off so much is because on windy days when our gas uh, water heater is on, it's right next to the CO2 sensor, mm -hmm. which makes sense. They want it there in case there's a leak. Right. But like, w I know it's going and the CO2 sensor still sometimes goes off. So sometimes you if just- If we have a good wind, it yeah. just- Sometimes you need to park your rig. The solution to that that we found is parking your rig, if you can, with that 
that vent away from the wind. So that way your rig takes away most of the wind coming into the furnace there. And then that just keeps that excess propane from leaking or blowing into your trailer. Not that it's enough to do anything unless obviously the propane goes out or the flame goes out, but uh, yeah. that just keeps the likelihood of that CO2 sensor going off. Uh, the next uh, propane problem that we've had is we've actually had the little pigtails that attach to your cans start to leak and we didn't even know that for I didn't a... know those were called pigtails. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Uh, and so we've actually had two of those. One, we had the dealership replaced because it was still under warranty then. But then uh, later on when we were in Moab, we had another one of those leaking. So I had to go in and replace that. Thankfully, it's a very easy fix. You can check out that video there of us doing, but basically all you do is you buy one of those replacement ones. There are different Didn't sizes. Did you buy the wrong size? I did. There are different sizes for different PSI <laughs> levels so make sure you know which PSI yours is mm -hmm. uh, and then you just use some normal uh, like plumbers tape to create a good seal on the screws and that's it so that is a very easy fix you just need a crescent wrench the right part and some plumbers tape can I just say I'm so glad that I have him because <laughs> <laughs> we would have been frozen popsicles if I had been in charge. Yeah, that is not a good thing. A propane leak when you are at below freezing temperatures, yeah. not a good thing. So <laughs> another problem that we have had with uh, propane leaks is the stove, actually. We drove and apparently we hit a lot of bumps. I mean, it happens As on these do. roads. Oh, my Lanta. Um, and the, the connector hook thing went boop off of the stove. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I asked Ashley to talk about this one because she actually knew what happened. <laughs> well, because I was the one that discovered it and I told you about it. I told you the connector thingy, my Bobby went and you said, okay, and then he fixed it. So uh, the stovetop has your burners that are attached to the lines coming from the propane tank. And it's just a simple little screw that holds those in place. They're not even taped in there. It's just an open air tube to, I guess, create airflow. I really don't know how that all works, but it's very similar to a barbecue and how that works on your barbecue. So all that happened is, like Ashley said, boop, the screw came out. And so uh, I thought it was something catastrophic at first. I was like, oh my goodness. But if this is happening to you, relax, calm down. As long as you can find that screw or get a replacement screw, all you have to do is line it back up and put that little screw back in and you should be good to go. Yeah, because it was on my good burner. Like, we all the know, bit. if you've lived in an RV, we all know there's a good burner. There's a good burner in houses too, come on yeah, now. It's your go-to burner. It's your go-to burner and it was my go-to burner and I was gonna have a conniption if it wasn't because I was like, I'm trying to cook people. Again, if you want to see that in detail, vlog right there or down below in the description. I'll probably have too many links for this video <laughs> to put them all in the iCards because I can only do five. So they'll be linked up down below by category if you guys are interested in seeing a more detailed how we fixed it thing. All right, now let's talk about probably one of the biggest issues with RVing is electrical issues because there are countless problems that can happen that can happen while you're traveling. Uh, but I would say the number one most common problem when all of a sudden you're having an electrical issue, the first thing you want to check is what, babe? The, the power pole outside? Yes, the power pole. So if you... What if, that's what it... What? It, I think it's referred to as a pedestal, but that's okay. Anyways, so when you are at a campground or an RV park, this is what I'm referring to, not when you're boondocking. If you all of a sudden lose power and you're at a campground, go and check the pedestal because odds are you've tripped that 30 amp or 50 amp breaker because especially when you're on 30 amp, it is very easy to exceed that limit. Mm -hmm. If you have one AC going and you use the microwave or maybe you have coffee mm -hmm. brewing, exactly, coffee brewing and you, uh, all of a sudden turn something on that uses a little more power like mm -hmm. a toaster or a microwave or whatever an AC unit or very, a fireplace a fireplace yeah very easy to exceed that so go and check that breaker mm -hmm. super easy fix just like any home you flip it breaker back maybe you have to go all the way over and then back really simple that would be my number one go-to when you're having problems number two after that is check your breakers <laughs> in your RV and yes I said number two <laughs> and Ashley giggled <laughs> And Maverick is now in from playing outside, so I apologize for the uh, noises. We are reading a dinosaur book right now. Anyways. She's so, she loves uh, dinosaurs. Like, I thought it would be a fleeting thing, you know, where you just love something and then you find something new. 
She's like that for she has half loved of her life. Dinosaurs, <laughs> just everything dinosaur. To the point where I'm considering having a dinosaur birthday party for her if it continues. Mm -hmm. I know. On the topic of dinosaurs, if you blow a fuse or if you are having electrical issues, the second place I would go to check is the bedroom or your wherever your circuit breaker is on the inside. Uh, and again, this is just like uh, your home for the 110 side because your trailer is split up in 110, which is your AC current, your alternating current, and then you have your DC side, which is your 12 volt that's running off the batteries. The AC side, the 110, is all of your uh, your breakers, your switches that you switch back and forth. Your DC side is going to be those little fuses, similar to what you have in your car. If you blow a fuse in your car, you got to get one of those 30 amp, 10 amp, whatever it says on those little fuses that you hold up to the light and look through. Uh, ours has little LED light indicators next to the 12 volt system, so if you blow one of those, that LED light shows up. But but just like your car, uh, if you don't have that LED light system, you can pull it out and hold it up to the light and see if that fuse is popped. So one of the things you might notice if you are fairly new to the RV world is all of a sudden your lights will still be working, but your outlets, say in your kitchen and in your bathroom, will stop working. And if you are new to the whole RV world, you might be like, what the heck is going on? Why are some things working and other things not? All my breakers are flipped, fine, the pedestal's still working, all that. And the reason is, just like in your home bathrooms and home kitchens, the uh, manufacturers are required to install what's called a GFI breaker. So that way if you spill water or moisture builds up, condensation builds up, that breaker will trip and uh, stop fires from spreading because of shorts and whatnot. The only difference is, instead of in a sticks and bricks house, where each outlet usually has its own little breaker, to save money in an RV, they put the entire system on one GFI breaker and so you have to go through the trailer and find where that breaker is. For us, unfortunately, it's in the very far back bathroom, so if the kids are sleeping or napping and they pop that, we gotta go through their bedroom into the bathroom to, uh, to reset it. It's very simple, just like a home. You have that little test button and a reset button. So you just click the reset button and boom, all your breakers should come back on. Yeah, like I said earlier, I love our home, but I could do without having all of our breakers and everything in the kids' room. Like, it makes no sense. It wasn't a family man that designed this oh, RV. No, not so much. No, if none of these solutions fix your problem, you probably have something a little bit more complicated or intricate. And we have had some of those issues, like yeah. our ground somehow, uh, our ground system from the circuit breaker back to the batteries got loose or just had a weak connection. And so all of a sudden, anytime we would use anything, our voltage would drop way down, which would then like keep our pump running or we wouldn't be able to use things like uh, high voltage things so I had to add a new ground from the frame of the RV back to the batteries to get that complete that circuit again so just little things like that which I had no idea about until I started doing some research and problem solving and figuring things so honestly I'm so so glad that he's the handyman that he is like uh, <laughs> so we would we would have died or given up on this so froze, long froze, to, froze death. to death if it were up to me because I can watch videos, but it's like, I just don't understand the, the videos the way that he does. And he's like, oh, all right, I'll do this. Bam, uh, fixed. And I'm like. That's one of the reasons I like making these videos is because I myself learn so much from YouTube and video content. So hopefully this is giving you guys some of that information you need to problem solve your problem. Uh, if it's not something simple like that, you might have to take it in and have someone at the very least diagnose the problem, then maybe you can fix it on your own. Uh, but fingers crossed, it's one of these simple solutions that you can do on your own. Uh, another thing that you're going to run into in the RV life is tank smells. Poopy! <laughs> not always. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, not just poopy, uh, but gray tank yes, smell as gray well. Tank, I mean, when you're washing yourself off and you it's been a couple days, the water's gonna be a little right. And doing the dishes, you have all that food and yeah. grease and crap. I mean, just... try to get the food off the dishes before you put it into the gray tank. That's just a little, you know, helpful hint because food stinks. Like, if it's, it's especially in water for a while. So, scrape the food off or do what we do use paper. <laughs> <laughs> so the fix for those problems is actually very simple. They ha they do sell 
uh, cleaning solutions that you can put mm -hmm. down there, but the simple over-the-counter fix is, is cheaper. cheaper. Let's go with that. Cheaper. We like to bleach out our black tanks, yes. and then we have been told that you can also bleach your freshwater tanks and your gray tanks. I don't want to um, bleach my my fresh water and but what we do for the gray and the black we bleach it out but then for the fresh water tanks we pour vinegar in it uh and that works fairly well for us we use distilled white vinegar and and it just kind of cleans it and gives it but you you don't just pour it down there and let it drain you let it the water build up so that it can kind of get a good rinse around it and then usually what we do is we dry for a while like we'll fill the black tank with bleach and he does the gray tank with bleach because we're not drinking that yeah it's post consumption so there's, yeah. no, there's no with the gray and black tanks no problem bleaching and the manufacturers actually do recommend doing a diluted bleach in the freshwater tank but for some reason to us we just didn't feel comfortable doing that even yeah. though many of you guys have told us you did that uh we just use vinegar so it's totally up to you but those are both good options if you guys want to see the video about us going into that more detail again I card or description but yeah like like I said we drive around for a while kind of let it slosh and and get a good rinse and then we do this right before we know we're going to be at a place where we have full hookups so that we can just whoosh, let it go that's that means flushing out the tanks yes do you speak Ashley <laughs> next up is one of the problems that we faced like within the first couple months of our RVing adventure our RV life we had gone to the Grand Canyon thinking oh it's down in the south it's in Arizona it's gonna be warm and hot. the Grand Canyon's at 7,000 feet elevation and it gets cold at night specifically when we were there it got down to like 15 degrees well, it's also <laughs> so uh, our exterior hose and water filters both froze and in fact our water filter cracked thankfully it's just one of those cheap $20 replaceable filters and luckily it was only those yeah and thankfully the freezing did not go into our interior pipes at all uh, but here is your tips and tricks for that one you can actually buy heated hoses that you just plug into your normal 110 outlets whether that be in your RV or outside and that keeps that from happening and also the, the other thing is, is a lot of uh, travel trailers, things I've seen, even fifth wheels, are now putting all of your hookups inside so you're, you don't have to worry about this. But if you don't have that luxury like we do, you can either buy a heated hose or they buy like, it's almost like heat tape. So it's like you do it yourself, uh, heated uh, hoses and things. And you could wrap that around both your water filter as well as your hose. Or you just disconnect it at night, which is what we do. So if you know that it's gonna get down below freezing, just disconnect your water filter and your hose, uh, and then you will be fine to hook it back up in the morning because uh, odds are most of the places you're gonna be, it's not gonna stay below freezing during the day. But if it is, it's gonna stay below freezing, you should probably look into the whole heated mm. solutions. So next up, let's talk about RV curtains. This is something that we faced fairly early on, and I guarantee you every RVer has had this problem. You have your little curtains that Especially slide when up. you have little hands. And slide down right here and these are on a very simple uh, string track system and if that string gets too loose your curtain will just poof, fall down it won't stay up so it's a very simple solution you just loosen that screw rotate it to tighten that string a little bit you don't want to get it too tight you want to find that that right balance and once you get that right balance of tight to loose your curtain will stay where you want it to be but again this is just problems that you're going to run into living full-time in a rig that's designed to vacation in two years of full-time use is like 20 years or more of vacation time and after 20 years you would expect your curtains to break so uh this is little things that are going to wear down more often when you're living in it or when you're traveling quite often in your rv all right next thing that you might run into which is actually very similar to just uh general wear and tear like the curtains mm -hmm. is you, you might notice that some of your cabinet doors uh either from the beginning don't stay closed very well or eventually they just start opening up really easily and that's probably because you run into the fact that either Either your screws on your catch system have gotten loose or maybe you've bent your little uh, male piece there's a male and a female piece on all your cabinet doors to get that nice click every time you close it and open it and if the screws on your female piece get loose then you it might have slid back too far to where it can't fully catch again it's a very simple solution just scoot the uh, female piece forward a little bit tighten the screws like this and you should be good to go it should catch perfectly uh, again just 
uh, you have to might have to play with it to figure out that sweet spot of where it needs to be but once you tighten those back down and make sure that you haven't bent your mail piece so it's crooked <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me you are killing me <laughs> always take care of those female pieces <laughs> gotta make sure they're nice and tight <laughs> Ashley is cracking up over here. So once you get that tightened back up and straightened out, you should be good to go. So another problem that we have run into is ice buildup in our freezer. Apparently since it runs on propane, it builds up quicker. It's just a different type of cooling system than your sticks and bricks fridge and freezer are. So it it basically draws out the heat and somehow that, I don't know if that just leaves the moisture or what it is, but it makes it far more prone to freezer buildup. So every few months or every year, yeah. you just have to thaw it out. Especially because you can get good freezer buildup and that takes up room in your freezer and you don't have much room as it is. So just pull everything out, let the ice melt, clean it all up. It gets a good it gives, a good, it gives it a good clean too because like you have to clean all the water and so you just use that to, to wipe the walls and then you wipe out your fridge and everything is so pretty after that uh so just and know then that it, and then your husband and kids come in and everything's spoiled another thing that you're going to want to do especially if you are going to i don't know florida <laughs> where it's hot anywhere arizona, arizona. the south yeah just where it's hot and muggy and you want your AC to work nicely is cleaning your AC filter. I mean, that's just good practice. It, you don't want it to get dusty and gross, especially because you're breathing that in too. So Something else we learned along those same lines of cleaning out the filter for your AC unit is on your furnace at a Sticks and Bricks house, you have filters that you change out as well. In fact, it's the same filters that you change for your AC system. But in an RV, I would say 90% of your furnaces do not have air filters. So uh, we have seen some people that have done some like DIY hacks to put uh, a, a filter on your air intake, which is usually underneath your fridge. So if you want to, to help clean that air out and maybe you have pets or maybe you're just allergic to a lot of stuff, that might help your allergies. But most RV furnaces do not come with filters. So don't be like worrying about digging around trying to fill it, find that filter to change because odds are it probably doesn't exist. And now on to our favorite topic, poop. On to you, Ashley. This is your expertise. <laughs> uh, clogged toilets, guys. <laughs> clogged toilets. Apparently, this is my expertise. <laughs> Never clogged one of our toilets before, but yes. There is a certain person in this house that clogs our toilets very well. Um, and so, we we did not have a plunger. And, and we've read that you can use a plunger, but it doesn't really make sense if you are going to use a plunger to clear out your clogged toilet you need to make sure that you have your flusher all the way open because if you're not flushing you're just pl plunging into a, a solid object it doesn't make sense so yeah. actually uh the main cause of clogged toilets in rvs is using too much toilet paper and or using too thick of toilet paper so or it could be that you uh have like a poopy pyramid and from having your your tanks open all the time and you're not getting enough water to flush it all out. That's true. So one of the tips that we found for when you are uh, staying at a campground and actually we've been guilty of this is we just leave our black tanks open mm -hmm. and when you do that you get all of the toilet paper and the solid waste objects building up down below when then all of the fluids just flush out. Whereas yeah. if you leave that door closed, your water stays up and it helps dissolve all that and eliminates that poopy pyramid and helps it flush and flow all out at yeah. once. So I'd say the best way to fix clogged toilets is to preventive, preventative measures, mm -hmm. such as using plenty of water when you flush, trying not to use too, too much toilet paper. And using septic safe toilet paper. Septic safe toilet paper. Or even if you want to go all the way to buying that RV toilet paper, you can. I feel like that's like playing beat the clock with your toilet paper though. So. <laughs> but definitely avoid the two ply thick stuff because that yeah. will just clog big time. And then uh, just making sure you flush well. If you do get a clogged toilet, our solution has been amazing. You grab a broom. <laughs> It'll be gross all at the same time. You grab a broom handle, you and shove yep. a garbage bag around it to keep it clean, and then you poke your poop with a stick. <laughs> you poke 
poke it with a stick. Basically, all we're trying to do there is, uh, is eliminate that poopy pyramid down below or to get the toilet paper. Well, it's that, like the toilet. When we have the toilet paper clogged, that's what yeah, we Yeah, the use. toilet paper clogs the actual tube going down to the tank is to just get it through that tank. So you might be able to use a plunger with that as well. We just were worried about that putting too much pressure on some of the things. So we just use, so we, we just poke, poke it. it with a stick. <laughs> And then get it down there. And then once it's down there, then you need to flush it and get it all out. But uh, basically the best solution for clogged toilets is just preventative measures, prevent yes. that. So when you're uh, at an RV park, leave that black tank closed until you're ready to flush it out. Yeah. I know that seems counterintuitive to having full hookups, but it's just the best way to go about but it to keep those things from getting clogged. It's really not. There's still the convenience of being able to open it up and let yeah. it flush out. Okay, we know this video is getting super long, but hopefully you guys have gotten some information out of it. Before we end it, we wanted to talk about not some of the problems that we've run into, but some of the inconveniences that we've had that we found solutions to. First off, probably most common is counter space in your kitchen. You want to take, take that away? Oh my lanta, there's there's never enough counter space. Like, it's... it's Even if you're in a Sticks and Bricks house, yeah, you complain about counter space. There's just never enough. So you kind of have to get creative when you live in an RV. And for the longest time, I was trying to use the teeny tiny little counter space that I have and then I would like kick James out of his working area and try and use the table, but that's just not as convenient. And so James actually came up with an ingenious idea. And by James, I mean me, because obviously and, I made And this. I didn't come up with it, the internet did. But basically oh. they sell, they, we did a take, take the take the link. We did a DIY build where I took a TV tray and then we actually mod podged it to match our coffee table mm -hmm. and then I just bought some basic hinges and just did it all DIY. They do sell much nicer and more convenient uh, hinges that click up and manually or automatically lock into place and then you can push a button to fold it back down. But basically any sort of table extension like that that you can do. We've even seen people that have had their dining room tables that can fold down to get out of the way so that way when when you're not eating, your living space is more open. So any sort of uh, way that you can fold down and collapse counter spaces or table spaces is really convenient because you have it there when you need it, but then you don't feel cramped when you're not using it. And I liked that ours was like five bucks. Yeah. Well, it was like probably eight bucks. And one of the other solutions to problems that we faced is for some reason, most manufacturers don't put locks on your doors, interior doors. And I don't know about you, but our kids love to come in and say hello to you when you're going poop. Let's talk about poop again. <laughs> and when you're, like, they just want to come in the bathroom with you. Yeah. So, uh, and, and let's be honest, the space to the bathrooms in RVs is, is not is massive. It's not real conducive for three people. So very simple fix. Thankfully the doors in your RVs are going to have the same kind of doors as your sticks and bricks as far as the knob size. So you can just go to a Home Depot or a Lowe's or whatever and buy a basic interior handle and replace that make sure it's got a lock on it and replace that with your other one. And that's what we did for our bathroom door so that way we can have privacy there. The one door that didn't have a lock that was a little bit more complicated is the door to our master bedroom is a pop pocket door and you can't just put your standard doorknob on there because yeah. there is no doorknob. So what <laughs> we did is we bought a little uh, deadbolt lock mm -hmm. and then I just drilled a little hole into the side of the pocket door so that way when it's all the way closed that hole lines up perfectly and I just click it in and lock it. And so uh, really you don't even notice it's there when it's open all the time, mm -hmm. but it just allows us to when we want to have our master bedroom door locked we can because sometimes you just don't want the kids up in your space. Well, and if you're changing privacy and everything like that, if there are like people with you, it's always it's always nice to have. Or if other things are happening, you know, lock the door. And on that note, guys, we would love to hear about some of the problems you faced and the solutions that you've come up with to fix those. If you could share those down below in the comments, mm -hmm. I know that the rest of the community would love to hear and read about those. But until next time, guys, remember, stay positive, get out there, life is an adventure. So make some memories. About, by, about poop. By, by fixing things. <laughs>